Pride of Dublin Ross on the 1st of August. It has seemed right that before we turn away from this place in which we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa, that one among us, in the name of all, should speak the praise of that valiant man and endeavour to formulate the thought and the hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there is anything that makes it more fitting that I, rather than some other, I, rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and shared in his labour and in his suffering, should speak here. It is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation, re-baptised in the Fenian faith, and that has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian programme. I propose to you then that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. That here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask of God, each man for himself, for such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul as belonged to Donovan Rossa. Deliberately here we avow ourselves as he avowed himself in the dock, Irish men of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of freedom it is Tone's definition, it is Mitchell's definition, it is Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause that the dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave not in sadness, but rather in exultation of spirit that it has been given to us to come thus into so close a communion with that brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who themselves are splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rossa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him and all that splendour and pride and strength was compatible with the humility and simplicity of devotion to Ireland, of all that was golden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland, of simplicity and holiness of patriotism, of a Michael O'Cleary or of an Owen O'Brownie. The clear true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today would surely have her. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. In a closer spiritual communion with him now than ever before, or perhaps ever again. In a spiritual communion with those of his day, living and dead who suffered with him in English prisons, in communion of spirit with two with her own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today, speaking on their behalf as well as our own. We pledge to Ireland our love, and we pledge to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, sacred to the dead, where men should, should speak with charity and restraint. I hold it a Christian thing as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, to hate oppression, and by hating them, to strive to overthrow them. Our foes are strong and wise and weary, 
but strong and wise and weary as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God, which ripens in the heart of young men, the seed sown by the young men of a former generation. And the seed sown by the young men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripening today. Rulers and defenders of the realms need to be weary if they are to guard against such processes. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm have worked well in secret and in the open. They think they have pacified Ireland. They think they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think they have foreseen everything. They think they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And when Ireland still holds these graves, Ireland, unfree, shall never be at peace. Wow, thank God I had to learn that all off by heart. I tell you, I'm very proud of you for doing that, very proud. Uh, this is the moment where anyone that has...